welcome back to Art Books Reviewed. And we're looking at this today. Anatomy for Artists. A visual guide to the human form. Um, and it's a great little book. I say little, actually it's quite a big book, uh, as you can see. It's a nice, smooth, uh, hardcover, white um, book. It is sort of a reference guide, but it's a few other things as well as that. And I'll look through and talk about those as we go. Um, I like the spine. They have got the title in large readable letters, so it stand out on your bookcase, that one. You won't be searching for that for long. And also I like the way it's got this little foot kind of um, emblem, logo, whatever you want to call it there. Um, and it's, yeah, like I say, it's published by 3D Total Publishing. Okay, it was published in 2020, so it's a fairly new book. Um, as it says on the back here, look, it does contain nudity. So... Be mindful of that. I mean, it seems stupid to say that because this is basically an anatomy book for artists. So and if you can't see the body, how are you supposed to be able to draw it? But it, it's worth pointing that out. Let's have a little look. It says on the back, written and illustrated by experts in the field of anatomy for artists. There are 240 specially commissioned colour photographs of the body, head and face. Detailed overlays, and I like the way this works, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. Detailed overlays show the musculature and contours of the human form. That's clever. I like it. Thorough introduction to anatomy fundamentals and terminology for artists. Yeah, it does go through a bit of terminology as well, um, which is useful because then you can actually know what you're talking about. You can use the correct terms for the bones and the muscles and whatnot. Uh, exploration of body types and other variables that affect the human form. Library of poses informs artistic applications with classical and creative variations. So yeah, there it is. It's 26 and a half centimetres wide, just over 32 and a half centimetres tall, and it's two and a half centimetres deep. This, it smells amazing, and the print quality is good. I have a few books by this company, and I really like, um, I really like them. I like the quality of the print. It's 301 pages long. So let's have a little look inside this lovely book. Um, I like the nice sort of clean white design as well. So there we go. Anatomy for Artists, a visual guide to the human form. So it's got, uh, so somebody's written the words, Jahirul Amin, photography by Robin Baraj, and then it's got artwork by uh, Charlie Picard, unless otherwise stated, so there are other uh, contributors as well. Tells you about those at the back of the book. It's been proofread also. So I'm not going to go through all of this book. Um, I'm going to just show you some excerpts, give you an idea of the kind of stuff that's in here and the format um, that it follows. Uh, there are several models featured throughout uh, in a variety of different poses. Um, so I'm going to be a slightly selective about what I show in this review. Just because I know, you know, for most artists, this is uh, bread and butter stuff. You need to be able to draw the human body. But some people may be watching this video who, who maybe don't want to see uh, all the nudity. So I, like I say, I'll be a bit selective about what I show. But hopefully in doing so, I will be able to still give you a good um, idea uh, of what's in it um, and so on. So what I really like is this pledge here uh, from the company. So this, com this publishing company, 3D Total Publishing, um, I've got a few of their uh, publications and I really like, um, I like them. But the, this pledge is really good. They've got this really ethical um, ambition um, to become carbon neutral. So they're basically planting a tree for every book they sell. And that's their pledge uh, from 2020. So I like that. That's really good. More companies need to do the same, I think, in this day and age. So here we go. There's the contents um, page. Um, we've got a forward. We've got then an introduction with some really interesting stuff here. We'll have a look at in a minute. Then it breaks down into a visual reference library with sort of the different areas of the body um, featured. Uh, and then they've got some sort of creative poses towards the end, a glossary contributors section and an index. And I think you can use this book in a variety of different ways. So you might just want to use it for inspiration. You might want it specifically uh, as a reference point if you want to um, sort of see uh, more information about this particular part of the body. It's good to help you understand the underlying structure 
uh, sort of the muscular and the skeletal structures so you can become kind of a better artist the more you know about how the the body structure works the better your your anatomy art uh, will be so yeah and you can just sort of dip into it as a reference book as well so let's move on here's the forward by jacob hankinson who is an artist and instructor uh, i won't go through all of this so yeah he's sort of talking about the importance of uh, anatomy and knowledge of human anatomy uh, and how basically you need that if you're striving for realism and you want to create a real realistic piece of work but other things too and he touches on that here so there's a bit of history of anatomy here his anatomy through the ages um look at this skeleton leaning on uh what is that a tomb yes <laughs> Um, here's a, an x-ray of the human body. So you get sort of an anterior and a posterior view for the male and female bodies, first of all, and all the bits of the body um, are labelled up. So I guess it helps, doesn't it, if you can actually refer to the, the muscles um, and the areas with the correct terminology. Um, then we get a, a skeletal breakdown, all the names of the bones, humerus, clavicle. It's my favourite bone name, I think, clavicle. Um, yeah. Uh, so the, the proportions of the different bits of the body and how the things actually operate. So movement, how does the arm extend uh, and move? What happens to the bones when an arm is moved? Um, so I found this is all very interesting. I used to draw skeletons a lot when I was younger. I think it was uh, inspired by, um, you know, Jason and the Argonauts uh, and those sort of moving skeletons. And yeah, I found this really, I like the clear so illustrations here as well. It's just broken down into the basic shapes um, and bones and muscles and so on. I mean, hands, they are so tricky, aren't they? I think most artists will agree. Hands and feet. They're just hard to get right because they're so flexible. And the, and his, you know, the thumb, even the thumb, just the thumb can move in so many different directions. Um, it's possible to create you know, a different hand shape by just moving the thumb around. And it's continued here. Of course, here's the Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci. More here about uh, joint me mechanics, um, particularly this, oh, the arm, shoulder. And here's some information about joints, understanding the different types of joints. Um, other oh, hand, look at all those, there's so many bones in a hand, aren't there? Complicated. So yeah, I like this section. It's all about understanding how that, that skeleton actually moves. So the knee and so on. The skeleton and the bony landmarks. So here's the skeleton from the front, from behind, and from the side view. A little bit more detail on the actual skull, the shape of the skull, and how that's constructed. Backbone. And how that can bend in different directions. can see the, the quality of the photography is good the lighting has been good on the models there's no you know back the background is blurred and uh, there's nothing distracting there you really just get the models uh, in their poses uh, again it's well lit like i say more here about the art that that's sorry the wrists and hands got some concentrating here on sort of the lower leg and foot so you get a mixture of photography uh, and illustration throughout. Muscles and tendons. These are really good actually, because um, I used to draw a lot of sort of fantasy art when I was young, particularly trying to get sort of warriors um, to draw those in, in kind of, and get the muscles right. Because obviously a warrior has to have muscles. You don't want a wimpy warrior. Um, and getting that six pack and the pecs and the shoulder muscles. The shoulders are very complicated. This is good because um, you know, the, the, the line art is breaking it down into the kind of the bits you need to be concentrating on. Anyway, moving on. 
So I like this hybrid of photography and illustration. That works nice on their face. Um, yeah, it's really good. So what's good as well with some of the line art here is it's possible to trace over this. Uh, and I'll show you an example here of me uh, having a bash at tracing with a pencil. As you can see, it's all very nicely laid out as well. So the quality of the photography, the fact that you've got overlaying illustration and line art on top, that's nice. It's unusual, I've not seen that before. And it's all laid out in a very nice way. And coloured as well. So I'm going to keep on moving through. We're still actually in the muscles and tendons section here. Um, it's now talking about sort of biceps, triceps, different muscle groups within the arm. We're now talking about the muscles of the pelvis and the thigh, the leg muscles, the muscle of the foot. Look how complicated this is. All of these sort of tendons. Incredible. Who would have thought all of that? I say who would have thought, if you're a medic or, or anything like that, you know what's there, or a surgeon. But for most of us, we just see a lump of flesh with skin on top and we don't worry too much about what's underneath. Am I right? Okay, so the different body types. So we've got these different types. You've probably heard of these before. You've got ectomorph, thin, skinny body types. They don't have a lot of extra weight on them. And very lean muscles. You've got a mesomorph, which is kind of... What we're saying large bone structure, naturally strong athletic types, so they've got muscle mass, they can gain muscle mass quickly. Um, and then you've got the endomorph, which is kind of more stocky, soft and rounded looking. Um, there's more, more fat there, so the muscle definition is less apparent. Um, and people tend to fall into the, one of these three categories generally. It's interesting what this is saying here about symmetry. Um, because what they've basically done is taken a photo of this model and then they've flipped uh, the right side of her face over to see what it would look like um, if, she, if she had two right faces and similarly if she had two left faces. As you can see, they look a bit strange for different reasons. They don't look natural. Um, so that's something to bear in mind with digital art. You can't just draw one side of the face, flip it and think it's going to look correct. Um, it's talking here about how nature uh, does there is symmetry in nature, um, but it's more believable and interesting um, if you if you don't have complete symmetry. Wrinkles of old age. Look at that. So here's some really useful reference pages here about the head in particular, looking you know at different angles from the side, looking down um, from below, from above. And then we've got a section here on facial features, which is nice. It's deconstructing the nose here. And again, we're seeing this from different angles, the structure of the nose. The photos, good quality, close up, well lit, clear. This is really good. So good for sort of comic art as well. I really like that. I like this, these four different layers, the photograph, sort of the, the basic line art. Then you've got sort of the different areas colour coded and then sort of geometric version as well. Sort of the snout, if humans have a snout, mouth, nose, the ear. That's always hard to draw, isn't it? And everyone's ear seems to be different, I've noticed. This is the dynamic action poses section. Some of them are pretty dynamic, as you can see. So that could be used for sword fighting or all, all kinds of things. Or just maybe getting a tray of chips out of a hot oven i don't know this is good too so great yeah really nice book well well produced very useful for artists um, who want a reference guide or manual for the human body so i really hope that you enjoyed looking at that i hope that it's um 
useful if you're thinking of buying it. I hope that's helped you make a decision. Um, I really like this book. I'll be using it mainly for tracing purposes, tracing hands, feet, all those tricky bits of body that I struggle to, to just draw from memory. Um, so if you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel for more like this in the future. See you then. Thank you.